Fortnite has become a global phenomenon, and there's no end in sight to the updates and tweaks Epic makes to the game on a regular basis. But while the somewhat cartoony graphics might lead you to think the game can run on potato hardware, that's not entirely true. At the lower settings, Fortnite can run on just about any PC built in the last five years. It's also available on mobile devices, which are generally far slower than even aging PCs. Officially, the minimum requirements for Fortnite are an Intel HD 4000 or better GPU and a 2.4GHz Core i3. The recommended hardware is quite a bit higher, GTX 660 or HD 7870, with a 2.8GHz or better Core i5. But what does that mean? I've tested at 5 settings for each GPU, 1080p low, medium and epic, plus 1440p and 4K at epic. I also tested integrated Intel and AMD graphics at 720p with the low preset. Some players will choose to run at minimum graphics quality, as it can potentially make it easier to spot opponents, and at those settings, Fortnite is playable on most PCs. At minimum quality, the fastest GPUs appear to be hitting a CPU bottleneck of around 400 frames per second, give or take. Minimum frames per second is around 230 frames per second, so if you have a 240Hz display, you can make full use of it. All of the dedicated GPUs average far more than 60 frames per second, with the RX 560 4GB hitting 141 frames per second. Even the Vega 11 integrated graphics break 60fps at 1080p. For Intel graphics, 1080p on the modern HD Graphics 630 is mostly playable, and dropping to 720p provides a reasonably smooth experience. It's not 60fps smooth, and older Intel GPUs like the HD 4000 are quite a bit slower, but it's at least viable. 1080p medium, the fast GPUs still hit a performance limit of around 270 to 280 frames per second, with minimums far above 144 frames per second. Nvidia GPUs have a clear performance advantage, though it's not really a problem as all of the frame rates are quite high. If you're trying to stay above 144 FPS minimum, however, you'd want a GTX 1060 or better. For budget cards where you'd want to run 1080p medium, the 1050 and 1050Ti are vastly superior to the RX 560. The GTX 1060 cards also surpass the RX 570 and 580, but the RX 590 does manage to beat at least the latest GTX 1063GB. But if we're looking strictly at acceptable performance, all the GPUs still break 60 frames per second. 1080p Epic quality cuts performance by more than half on most of the GPUs, though the fastest cards still may be hitting other bottlenecks. The RX 570 4GB and above continue to break 60 frames per second, while the budget cards generally fall in the 40 to 60 frames per second range. For 1440 for 144Hz displays, you'd want a GTX 1070 Ti or better. Nvidia GPUs continue to outperform the AMD offerings, with the GTX 1070 beating even the RX Vega 64. That's better than how things looked early this year. But overall, the Unreal Engine 4 games tend to favour Team Green. 1440p Epic starts to favour Nvidia's newer RTX cards a bit more, likely thanks to the additional bandwidth of GDDR6. Overall, the Vega 56 and above continue to break 60 frames per second, while only the RTX 2080 Ti can break 144 frames per second. What does it take to push more than 60 frames per second at 4K Epic? The GTX 1080 Ti RTX 2080 and RTX 2080 Ti all average more than 60 frames per second, though only the 2080 Ti maintains minimum frame rates above 60 frames per second. Otherwise the rankings remain about the same as at 1440p, with about half the performance. I've done CPU testing with several of Intel's latest i3, i5 and i7 parts, and a couple of AMD's second generation Ryzen parts. All of these benchmarks use the RTX 2080, which is mostly similar to the GTX 1080 Ti in performance. This is to emphasise CPU differences. If you're running a mainstream GPU, like a GTX 1060, performance would be far closer for any of these CPUs. Since the initial launch, Fortnite has also seen improvements in multi-threaded performance, which helps most CPUs hit more than playable frame rates. Intel CPUs lead at nearly all resolutions, with the i5-8400 beating any of AMD's Ryzen processors. Even the i3-8100 comes relatively close to the Ryzen processors, and at 1440p and 4K, it even takes the lead, though 4K is effectively a six-way tie. Wrapping up the benchmarks, 
I've only run 1080p tests on the notebooks, since two of them have 1080p displays. Needless to say, with lower CPU clock speeds and fewer CPU cores, the desktop GPUs easily outperform the notebook cards at 1080p low and medium. 1080p Epic finally sees the GT73 VR pass the GTX 1060, but the CPU is still holding it back. Given the multi-threading support of the current Fortnite release, the 6th core, 8th gen Intel CPUs should do quite a bit better. Benchmarking Fortnite can be a bit problematic thanks to the randomised battle bus starting path, player movements and more. Thankfully, the replay feature helps minimise variability, making the results of the second batch of testing far more useful. Thanks again to MSI for providing the hardware. All the updated testing was done with the latest NVIDIA and AMD drivers at the time of publication, NVIDIA 417.35 and AMD 18.12.3. NVIDIA's GPUs are currently the better choice for Fortnite, though if you have an AMD card, you don't need to worry. They'll generally break 60 frames per second at the appropriate settings just as well. These updated test results were collected in late December 2018. Given the continued popularity of Fortnite, we may revisit performance again with a future update, especially if the engine and performance changes again. These results might be a snapshot in time rather than the final word on Fortnite performance. With the right hardware, you can run any reasonable settings at high frame rates. And if you're hoping to climb the competitive ladder, just drop everything but view distance to low and work on honing your skills.